Bagaga. Good morning, 846. We did have some comments here on, oh boy, did we, on our Facebook Live uh, feed. Rosemary comments in, this move is like a COVID mandate. Yeah, like it or not. It is what it is, guys. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, Mary Duane is Metanani. Why not hold the Democratic primary at their headquarters? Uh, she also asks, what proof will GDC require to prove that the person is truly a registered Democrat? Good question. We're about to get the answer. Uh, also on this move by the Democratic Party, it was done last minute, uh, just mentioned in the news uh, this morning as of today's uh, deadline. Yes, so there are the comments there, guys. Keep them coming on our Facebook Live uh, feed. Miss Maria Pangolina, the Guam Election Commission Executive Director, uh, kind of unpacking uh, this decision. Uh, and I guess, Miss Maria, we'll just start at the beginning because there was something that came out from the Democratic uh, Party of Guam, uh, drunk drive, uh, the executive, I'm not sure exactly what his title is, Sharag Bajwani had come out with a release, and he basically said that we did this because the GEC wrote us a letter. Um, so can we just clarify that, Ms. Uh, Maria? Do you guys send this letter uh, to the respective political parties every election? And this letter basically said, hey, do you guys know according to this court ruling you can have uh, closed the primary, yada, yada, yada? Is this something that you guys do every election? Yes, we do. Okay. So the 2004 Judge La Morena court ruling says that the Guam Election Commission is required to send a letter to the respective parties to ask what kind of primary election they prefer. Right. And I'm assuming every year you do this, it's almost one of those things where you send out this letter, but you kind of already know the answer. And because it's always been the same answer, at least every election that we send this letter, and the answer has always been... For both. There is no answer. So if they don't <laughs> reply to us, then we it's take open. it that they want an open primary. Right. So when you got the reply from the Democratic Party of Guam, was it Kellen Froke out? Did you freak? Like, whoa, wait, they were they responded? Oh, well, they haven't responded officially to us. Okay. Um as you as you may know, it's required to be in their bylaws. Uh, so what the Guam Election Commission uh, would need to get is a copy of the revised bylaws. That's that's by statute that they have to give us a copy of their bylaws every time it's um, uh, it's changed. And they also have to let us know um, what kind of primary election they want. So, Miss Maria, uh, I guess we'll just who's going to pay for this closed primary election and who's going to run it. <laughs> So, you know, somewhere in the election code of Guam, within the 21 chapters, there is a section that says that the government of Guam local appropriation must pay for the expenses of the primary election. Okay. So we, the people of Guam, are paying for this closed primary, whether you're a Democrat, whether you're identifying as Republican, whether you walk around telling people you're a giraffe, doesn't matter. We're paying for this election. Close, well, open, be, whatever, right? Yeah, it would be the primary election, Chris. And so the primary election will be held on Saturday, August 27th. Okay. So how is it going to work, Miss Maria? Is this going to be an election where you guys do your regular election stuff, where you're like watching out for fraud and all that? Or is it just on, under the Democrats watching Democrats? Uh, we would uh, hire our precinct officials. We would train them. We would make sure we let them know they'll get a precinct official book uh, manual and they would have to conduct the election. Um, you know, they're, they're who we are, they're who represents us out there in the 22 polling sites. So there will be 335 of them out there across the 67 um, precincts, five in each precinct. And yes, it will be conducted the same. It will be conducted then. Um, I'm th there will be new procedures then. Um, if it if you know if we get officially notified that it's yeah. going to be a closed primary, we would modify the precinct official manual to include um, the changes that have to be made. Okay, so so we're going to pay for it. You guys are going to run it as if it was a regular election. It's a closed primary. So, uh, Miss Maria anticipating that you guys are going to get the official notification from the democratic party of Guam, 
what would be the process? I'm a registered voter. I had you guys with my approval check on my registration status. So just first of all, officially for the record, I am a registered voter, correct? Yes, okay. you are a registered voter. Chris. Okay, so when I registered to vote, there's a section there where I, it's optional. I can declare my party affiliation, correct? Yes, okay. and it is optional. So out of the 50,000 voters that we have, registered voters that we have today, very few have declared Republican or Democrat as their party affiliation. How few, Ms. Maria? Because I'm hearing something like 4,000 out of the 50,000 registered voters have declared a party affiliation. That's correct. So um, about 2,500 have declared um, Democrat as their party affiliation and 1,700 some have declared Republican as their party affiliation. Okay, so let me get this straight. If this closed primary election was held today, 2,500 people would decide which 15 senators, which gubernatorial team moves on to the general election? It depends. It oh. depends because part of the process would be the, in, you know, includes part of the, um, the part of the court ruling says that the party who decides what kind of the election they have would have a uh, would tell us would tell the Guam Election Commission how they want the election um, conducted, but it would be up to the board um, to decide finally. Okay, so Miss Maria, can we just go back? So I am a registered voter. I, however, did not declare an, a party affiliation. So when I go to vote in this Democrat closed primary, would I be able to cast a ballot? in the Democrat closed primary if I did not declare uh, to you guys and to everybody as God is my witness that I am in fact a Democrat. If I just left it blank, am I able to go vote for, you know, Democrat candidates in the closed primary? Again, again, Chris, it would be dependent on how, on what the board decides finally based on what the Democratic Party um, lets us know how they want it conducted. And so we heard from Tony Babata, the Democratic Party chair, that that's how they're going to conduct it. It's going to be with registered Democrats. He said it's one of the same. If you're a registered Democrat of GEC, then you're, you know, you're with the Democratic uh, Party of Guam. Um, so I know that's not official and in writing, but I just wanted. So the process, uh, Ms. Maria, from what you know, I show up to vote. And if I am uh, able to vote, in the, how does it work? Do your precinct officials, do, the, do I have to say, like, I am a Democrat? I solemnly swear. Yes, you do. That's by law, and the court ruling also emphasizes that. So actually, the court ruling says that that you have to you have to voice out what your Democrat, what your party affiliation is. Yeah, Miss Maria. But we have a lot of conversations, and we've had them on this very air about voter turnout, and you know, making it easier for people to vote, for encouraging the voter turnout. So. Are you concerned at all about uh, privacy issues? I mean, for a lot of reasons, um, voters may not want to announce that they are Democrat or Republican or, you know, independent. Yes, you know, and, and um, as always, the Guam Election Commission must follow the law, Chris. Um, and if that, you know, de deters the voter participation, that's something that we need to deal with. When are, is the uh, board going to meet to decide on these uh, very crucial election issues? Well, we have a meeting set for May 5th. Um, but if, and you know, Chris, I didn't check if our public notice came out. If our public notice already got published, then we cannot change the agenda. If the public notice has not been published, um, I can check with the chair and the vice chair if this would be included in the agenda. Okay, so Ms. Maria, according to what we heard from the party chair, Tony Babauta, um, he did say that the party is leaning towards you have to be a registered Democrat to cast the ballot in this uh, closed uh, Democratic primary. So I wanted to ask, uh, 
given that today at this very moment we only have 2,500 people who would be eligible uh, to vote in this primary based on what the Democratic Party chair has indicated mm-hmm. their desire is uh, in moving forward. Um, so are we, you mentioned hiring hundreds of people, but if there's going to be fewer people voting, does that, you know, mean correspondingly that we're not going to spend as much on the Democrat primary? Um, it wouldn't, it would not only be a Democrat primary. So it's everybody at the same time. Yeah. Uh huh. And Chris, uh, going back to your question, um, it's not clear to me whether it's the Guam Election Commission Voter Registry of Democrats or is it a Democratic Party of Guam list of Democrats that is to be used. I'm not clear on that and I'm not, I'm not sure which one they prefer to be used. Well, I could take a wild guess, but I mean, Tony, uh, the chair said that they were, it was one and the same, that if you're registered at uh, GEC as a Democrat, that you would be reflected on the party list. Is that accurate? I know because I remember um, the Guam Election Commission, um, at the request of the Democratic Party, we were there to, um, we were there as a voter outreach process. And at the, if you remember at the Ghana shopping center where um, the people were able to register as Democrats with the Democratic Party, but they needed to be registered voters. So the Guam Election Commission was there to conduct voter registration. And so um, I don't think it's the same list. They would have a list. Um, the Democratic Party has a has a membership list, I believe, and the Guam Election Commission has the voter registry where we've uh, we've noted who, from their affidavit of registration, uh, indicated their party affiliation. Two different lists. Oh wow. Uh. So we had a comment here. So uh, Cecile comments in, this is an interesting comment, ladies and gentlemen. If I am a Republican and I want to support Lou and Josh, am I eligible to cast my vote in the Democratic primary? That's a good question. And um, it would, you know, we will look into it and see what happens. Right. Again, um, it, uh, you know, the policies and procedures must be set up by the Guam Election Commission. Right. So, Miss Maria, I guess I just also wanted to ask, uh, because we did have a comment here from Rosemary. Uh, Are registered voters able to change their party status right now? Um, (laughs) Yes, uh, and we're going to double check and triple check our website to see whether it'll crash because Chris Barnett wants to uh, uh, register as well as the rest of our 40,000 registered voters, you can indicate your party affiliation by getting on our website at gec.guam.gov and re-register online. Okay, so this is going to require us to re-register, Miss Maria. Um, If you want to declare your party affiliation with the Guam Election Commission, and again, if that's how the Democratic Party wants it to be. Wow, that's a lot. That is a lot. What's the timeline uh, do you anticipate before we have solid answers to all these questions I just asked, which I feel like everyone has the same questions on their mind? Um, well, the, the meeting is May 5th. Okay. So if, if, that's, if, if, we're not, if we're not able to change the agenda, then I'm pretty sure, well, it, the commission would probably call an emergency meeting to discuss. Miss Maria, I wanted to, uh, because there was a response from the uh, St. Nicholas uh, Salas Matanani team, uh, I think Sabrina had said uh, something about uh, they were prepared to run on an independent uh, ticket. Can we kind of go into the logistics of what it would take? Uh, for any uh, candidate, like let's say maybe someone's running as a Democrat and they feel like they would be equally supported by Republicans, right? I mean, in the primary, maybe they want to switch over to the independent, just kind of like stay out of the whole deal that's going on on that side of the ballot. 
So is it feasible? What does it take so to, to the first? Yeah. So Chris, they would have to file okay. as candidates when they turn in their um, when they turn in their packet. Uh, we would look at the nominating petitions and validate the denominating petition says that uh, Chris Barnett is running independent or Jason Salas is running independent because the people that nominate you are nominating you as an independent candidate for the primary election. So we will look at those nominating petitions. Those must say independent. If you're running Democrat, there's a space on the, <coughs> excuse me, there's a space on the nominating petition that says Chris Barnett is running Democrat. All that on the nominating petition, the top of the nominating petition should be filled out before signatures are collected. That's really important yeah. because, you know, they're saying, I trust that uh, Maria Pangolinan is going to run as an independent candidate for whatever. So that's what we need to know that the nominator is uh, is no knowledgeable or knowing that he or she is nominating Maria Pangolinan to be queen of the Manamku. Oh, gosh. Uh, Miss Maria, I just want to go back on leave. Can I just go? I just want to go back on leave. It's not the day. <laughs> Miss, Miss Maria, I want to ask you though, from Nestor Lecanto, so many unanswered questions. Four months to sort this out. Is that enough time? Mm, we wish, we always wish we had more time. You know, we have critical, we have very critical timeline. And one of the most critical for us, the Guam Election Commission was sued, is that ballots must be mailed out no later than 45 days before any election to our military yeah. and overseas voters. Yeah. So that's that's a critical thing and that's something always at the front of our our, our, yeah. our minds here at the Guam Election Committee. Yeah, Miss Maria, so I'm wondering if I'm one of these uh these are the Uikava uh ballots you're talking about? Yes. Right. So yes. so I'm just wondering if I'm in the military serving abroad and I get wind of this whole situation with the Democrats closing the primary and I'm not afforded an opportunity to, you know, re-register to declare my party affiliation so I could vote in the primary that I always vote in that's now closed, do you anticipate lawsuits? Because it kind of sounds like this is like lawsuits well, waiting to happen. Chris, um, the, the, uh, app, the, um, uh, the absentee ballot application affords the absentee voter the opportunity to declare uh, uh, to declare the his or her party. Right. It's right in the application is for it the optional, ballot. Uh, yes, it is. It's optional. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. If it's optional for me and I can't, you know what I mean? I'm here, but you know there might be someone who's serving, defending our freedom abroad right who didn't fill out that party affiliation thing because you know for whatever reason it's free country so those people miss maria so are they going to be given the yeah. time and the opportunity so, i mean who's going to tell chris, them okay so chris if you're in Tim if you're uh where where would you be if you're out there serving the war right yeah and you wanted to vote in the primary election you would have to fill out an absentee ballot application form. Okay. That application form gives you the opportunity to to declare your party affiliation. Right. So through the process, e even to request for the ballot, you have that opportunity. So the onus is not on the Guam Election Commission to inform the voters that something has changed and you now got to declare a party affiliation to vote in the primary election. Is that what you're saying? No, that's not what I'm saying. Oh. The onus is always on the Guam Election Commission to put out, a, you know, education campaign on, and you know, hope hopefully those education campaigns increase voter participation. 
and don't deter, do not deter the, the voter participation. So, um, so with regard to um, you will Kava voters, we get, uh, just so you know, uh, we get guidance from our U.S. Department of Justice. We do have, uh, we do work with them closely. They, I'm sure they will contact us once they get wind of the situation. Okay. So are, when you talk about educational materials, are you guys uh, anticipating pending like an official notification from the party, maybe tutorial videos about, hey, if you're voting in the Democrat primary, then, you know, first of all, if you didn't declare a party affiliation, you got to re-register and declare it, and then this is how it's going to work. Yes, and with and with partners like the Link K and KUAM, we're really wow. we're really thankful for for <laughs> you because through you we do the we do one of you know we try our best to do our education campaign through you who reach the masses. Thank you, Miss Maria. Is there is there anything else? I know that we're still figuring this out. Uh, board meeting next week, right? What can you say? I just want, if you could, a message to the voters, Miss Maria, because this is a, a big change. It's huge. It's never been done before. That's correct. So, please, you know, the Guam Election Commission will work diligently to make sure that we do this correctly. Um, and the Guam Election Commission will push out the, the media releases so that um, every as as much as possible, um, uh, we will as as decisions are made, as this, uh, as the policies and procedures get set, uh, we will make sure that it's on our website. We will make sure that our media partners get wind of it, and of course, our our uh, meetings are open to the public. Uh, they will be live streamed, and co we uh, do accept comments and and please you know, keep abreast of what's going on. And who knows, you know, Chris, um, with all this, um, with all this media coverage, maybe uh, lots more people will show up to vote. So can a, can a, can a, a person who's a registered voter as a Republican, can they re-register and sw they can switch, right? And no problem. Yes, okay. anytime before August 17th. Okay, so that's the move, guys, as of now. I mean, uh, thank you, Ms. Maria. Hagamas. Okay, keep me posted. There you go. Ms. Maria Pangolina, Executive Director of the Guam Election Commission. So, yeah, the play right now, guys, we had the Democratic Party chair on. Uh, Tony Babalta, he said this thing is going to hold. There was an overwhelming majority that uh, voted on this decision. Um by the Democratic Party to close their political uh, primary in order to strengthen the Democratic Party and obviously to prevent those pesky Republicans from crossing over and voting for whoever it is pesky Republicans would tend to vote for in a uh, Democratic uh, primary. We did have some comments, guys. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I did get a WhatsApp here. I think maybe maybe voting privacy might be affected. Yeah. Pretty sure. Uh, let's see here. Some of the comments. <laughs> it sounds like we need a training class to go vote. Yes, I agree. Uh, Arthur comments in here. Well, let me just get, there's a, just a ton of comments. Chris Cave. Wow, confusing again. Um, Cecile, so if you're a Republican and you want to support Lou Josh, are you able, eligible to cast your vote? Yes, you got to re-register and then register yourself as a Democrat. Uh, Doreen Pareda, can you change party affiliation between the two or three parties for the primary and the general fluently? I don't believe so, because like Miss Maria said, the deadline is August. Uh, what you say? Yeah, I missed it. The deadline is uh, August. Whatever the deadline to register to vote, I mean, that's the deadline to register to vote for that election. So you can't go and register, re-register, you know, as a Democrat and then just switch in the general. Because they're not checking IDs in the general. Well, they are checking IDs. <laughs> But they're, they're not checking your party affiliation. The general election is wide open, okay? That's one thing I do know for sure from this morning. Uh, Chris K., wow, confusing again. Uh, the Balbins, please tell me where I go to verify my party because I registered like so long ago. Yeah, uh, you know, you can call the Guam Election Commission. You can go to their office at OCA. 
Um, you know, my mom wasn't sure if she was registered to vote, and we just called over, and, you know, she spoke to somebody, and it turned out she was. So, yeah, uh, the guy, it might just be a good thing, guys, I think, to go and check your status. Know your status. Wow. I thought we were done saying that. But know your status, guys. Go and check uh, what you're registered as, if anything. I'm not anything. I <laughs> I didn't check any of the uh, boxes for party affiliation. Uh, since the declaration of a party is optional at the time of registration, how can we find out if we have declared a party affiliation? Now, I just told you, you call the election commission, you say, hey, my name is so-and-so. They might ask you, you know, to prove your identity, and then you would say, you know, uh, what party did I? 